Hey, what's going on? Joe Menza here with another little painting video. My lighting isn't the greatest in this video, um, so apologies beforehand on that. Uh, I didn't forgot to put the, the lock on so it wouldn't uh, change uh, focus and lighting. But uh, this one here, I just wanted to do like a sunset type type thing. And I've got some alizarin crimson and some cad yellow hue going. And I've already wet the paper down. Now this is Fabriano. I'm going back to Fabriano studio after having not used it for a while. And uh, I did a couple paintings prior to this I wasn't super happy with. I don't know, just got into a little bit of a funk. I think it happens to everybody. And the way out of it is just, just keep painting. Don't let it get you down. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's going to happen. You're going to have some bad paintings, some paintings you're not happy with. Just uh, use those to experiment with and uh, paint on the back and just keep plugging along. You're going to do a lot of paintings in your lifetime, so they're just little minor blips on the radar. So I've added some ultramarine blue, and we're going to try to blend this sky in together. And just getting some red down in the bottom here some reddish orange on the bottom. <clears throat> and if it's a little too strong, give it a little spray, kind of break that up a little bit. Now with 25% cotton paper, especially Fabriano, you'll notice everything tends to sit up on top of the paper. It can be useful to you or not so useful to you. And now you'll notice something here. I'm, I'm cleaning up my palette. If you want to make some grays, <clears throat> clean, clean your palette, clean your, your, your trays, and you can make clean your trays, get some grays. So just going to make some cloud patterns here. Probably have a couple of trees, so it's not going to be that important. But uh, just, just dabbing in some, some clouds. Just a random pattern, try to leave some of that blue there. Taking another little soft brush and I'm just clean brush, just creating the tops of some of those clouds. Clean as needed so that you can clear those off. And you'll get some cloud tops. Simple as that. You can use a tissue too, but I'm going to do a little blending, so I'm not uh, too concerned with it. So I'm taking my nice soft goat hair brush, just gently, while this is wet, doing some blending, just to soften it up a little bit. Soften it up, get rid of some hard lines. And just softening up to this, this hard line that was created here. And creating a little streak, sort of, you get a little as the sun's going down. I just wet the brush a little bit more. I just really want that color in there. Reds tend to dry back quite a bit, so um, it's something to keep in mind. Just coming back with a little bit more yellow, just kind of spreading that out a little bit. Same thing on the bottom. Yellow, orange, and red. And just coming in with a tissue and just dabbing off a little more cloud tops.
and just a bit more yellow on the bottom. As you go, you can see how things dry back and you might need to add a little more, a little less. Not a little less, obviously. Uh, you can spray things down if you, if you have too much paint on there. I'm just creating a little land on the sides here. A little yellow, a little blue. Ultramarine blue, cad yellow hue. And now we're just going to put in some sort of semi-distant foliage in the back, using the corner of the brush. Now I will tell you, since I'm narrating this video after the fact, a lot of these are going to get covered up. It, it happens. Sometimes you put something in and you decide something looks better. Um, so if you're following this, just don't get too focused on that. But in our mind, we know it's back there. So maybe it adds a little depth. So just doing a little more foreground on the on that foliage. You notice if you use the corner of of the hake brush, you can create little pointy things. You'll notice I do that fairly quickly, quick strokes. It just seems like uh, it, the more deliberate you are, the less spontaneous it feels. So now I'm just doing some blending here with a clean brush. Just dragging that across creates some nice effects in that reflected sunlight. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my uh, sort of a rigger brush. This one's a little fatter. It's got a longer handle on it. I think it's a number 10. Uh, and I'm just gonna put some a tree over here. Just make some quick branches up. Going a little darker with this tree just to offset it from everything else. Just flicking out some things. I think the number three rigger is better for branches, but this one's in my hand, so <laughs> it's the one I'm using. And I'm going to have some leaves anyway, so they're just there. And I'm just going to scribble in some stuff down at the bottom here. Just some dark, just some scribbling. So now on the other side here, I'm going to take my fan brush and I'm going to put in some, I'm going to put in some nice pine trees. So some ultramarine blue, a little bit of Payne's gray, maybe a little cad yellow hue. So you get a nice dark tree color offset it against the background.
And we'll use a little of that same stuff that's already on the brush to create some foliage in and around the trees. You uh, want to be, and then of course now I'm, I'm doing the same up on the leaves. So it's sort of efficient to look around your painting and now that you have that leaf color on there, it's just, a, just an efficiency thing to utilize that color. Again, sorry about that brightness at the top. Uh, it's uh, the AF lock not being on on the camera. But you can still see what's going on. We're not working on that area at the moment. In addition to learning painting, you have to learn how to uh, shoot video. <laughs> um, and I want to get better at it. My goal is I want better videos for you guys. Um, really the best that I can put out. I want it to be as easily seen and understood so that you have success when you do your paintings. I have people that send me messages and say, this didn't turn out right or this didn't turn out right. What did I do wrong? How can I correct this? Um, so I want to help you as much as I can so that you have an enjoyable time. As I said, I did a couple paintings before this and uh, it didn't turn out well. I I don't know. I This week here has been a difficult week. Uh, over last weekend, my father passed away and... Uh, he had been having some issues for a while, but uh, it was still still tough. And uh, some things happened. You know, I use painting as an escape, and I recommend it to people. But uh, there are some things that are just uh, tough to uh, tough to put out of your mind. You know, so in addition to all this that we're going through with shelter in place and things like that. I mean, I was trying to put out as many videos in a short time because I know everybody's home and, you know, kind of looking for some enjoyment. And uh, last weekend I was going to do a lot more painting and then I got the call and um, I was able to visit my dad three hours. I had to go and I had to wear a mask and get all set up and um, I got there three hours before he passed away and um, I got to, you know, see him and hold his hand one one more time. And so it was a very emotional weekend. I'm gonna drop in some birds up here and just kind of zoom in a little bit and let you see some various aspects to this. Now, while this is still wet, I'm gonna scrape in some on the tree trunks just to get some light and create some trunks on the bottom just to create some light areas just gently with the credit card pulling down taking off a little bit of paint and taking advantage of the tooth, the grain of the paper. That is one thing I really like about Fabriano. If you are big on scraping and you like scraping, Fabriano 25% the studio, it, it, it scrapes so nicely. A little harder on cotton paper. So I'm coming back with some cad yellow hue, a little bit of green that's already on my palette, and I'm just going to highlight some, some leaves here. Highlight on this side too, the side where the sun would be still hitting. <clears throat> so let's put a, uh, let's put a mat on this and see how we look. So 
So here's a mat, and I can tell you already that at this point I wasn't 100% happy with the painting. I put the mat on, I went and I stopped the camera and I sat down on my couch and I was just looking at the painting and I didn't like the way that big rounded area of the sun is in the background. It just, I kept looking at it and I said, it needs something. So this is a point when you would think this is the end of the video, but it isn't. And I'm gonna show you how a decision can really just, a couple little additions of things can really, you know, when you're done with your painting, if you think it's done, set it down, look away, look back. And maybe it needs something. Maybe there's just something amiss. Um, and that was the case here. So I'm going to show you exactly what I did when I fired up the camera. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to alleviate that roundness in the back, um, that sun, it just looks like a big blob. I mean, it doesn't really look, there, there's something, something wrong there with the shape. So what can we do? So my immediate thought is, is more trees. And we could have tried to break that up a little bit, but some trees to look down the middle to sort of create a point to where you are looking more down into the sunset without blocking it. So a couple more pine trees, a few more pine trees we'll put on each side. Same colors as the others. Now when this is, you tell me if you liked it before in the comments or after I did this, um, let me know. I can tell you that everyone I showed it to at home really liked it, and this one is being kept. So I know I had success <laughs> from that standpoint, but I'd be interested in some opinions. And of course, we've blocked a lot of that foliage I talked about in the background, but that happens. Sometimes it just doesn't work, and if you can go over it, that's fine too. That's the whole fun of this, really. So now we're gonna start putting in some on this side. And if you can add more trees and get away with it, trees are always nice to, to look at. So make them different sizes, you know, you don't want them all exactly the same size. Little yellow highlights. Now you can see here we still haven't solved the problem. It the it still it doesn't really look rounded. We still haven't really fully solved the issue. So a little bit more work to be done. Adding a little bit of grasses, a little more trees, and just sort of balancing that out. Okay, so on this side here, put some smaller trees. Taking advantage of the randomness of the fan brush, just to make things look branchy. <clears throat> I'm 
just trying to pull that out a little more to the right. Put a little more highlights on. And I, so I think by doing so, this is what I've learned, and I always say I learn as I, I'm learning with you. So if you're at a lower stage or an earlier stage, not a lower stage, but you're a, at an earlier point in your learning, I've put in about three, three years of, of this. Now, over three years I've been painting, but I've put in a lot of hours per day. So, <clears throat> um, you know, I try to paint every single day and I watch a lot of videos and just do a lot of research on things. And so that's what I'm passing along to you. And uh, in this painting, I've learned something myself. And so what we've done here, I feel, is that we've framed, it's a frame within a frame. We've framed the sun by giving it the trees on both sides. And now it almost creates that focal area of interest down the center where you're wanting to get to that sunlight. So when you create trees or arches or things to look through, it causes you to want to look beyond kind of you're somewhat being blocked a little bit and you're looking through to get through that point. So that's what I think has happened here to, to an extent. And really, it was an accident, if you think about it, because the shape of that, the way that light was in the back, caused me to add something that I originally didn't have in mind. I'm just flicking a little water in here to break up. Those trees are kind of dark. Just flicking a little water in there couldn't find my toothbrush so I'm using a brush you have that happen where you're sitting at your easel you haven't moved and you set things down either on the table or the floor and you're like where did that brush go where did my where did my palette go and it's like it's like I was I didn't have moved <laughs> and so I'm like for five minutes I'm looking for my toothbrush and I'm like ah forget it I'll just use my regular brush and then I look over to my right and there it is sitting there So I'm putting some small trees or low foliage, distant foliage down that center point. I wasn't going to put anything down the middle. I was going to let it look like water was going out <clears throat> from the back, and that is debatable. But uh, so I've got that, and then I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm sorry the lighting was a little off. Um, here it is in a virtual frame. And I think it turned out pretty well. Thanks for watching, everyone.